Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Katie Huff with Katie Huff Ministries, and I am absolutely thrilled for you to be joining us on Setting Yourself Free, a, a podcast where we encourage you to be set free from whatever is holding you back to being, doing, and having all that God created you to be, to have the time freedom, financial freedom, whatever it is. And I am so thrilled to um, have this amazing entrepreneur, podcast extraordinaire, John Lee Dumas, JLD, for Entrepreneur Entrepreneurs on Fire. You may or may have known about this. Obviously, if you don't, you should, because there's 1.4 million listeners, and I'm pretty sure that you'd want to be 1.41, and uh, <laughs> we're encouraging you to do that. He has been doing, he started his podcast in 2012. I am thrilled to have him here. He has a total of 39,027 total episodes that he has done so far. I'm, I might be a, a few off, but obviously this guy knows what he's doing. I can't wait for you to hear from him. He has the most amazing book. I have to throw that out there, Mr. JLD. You have got to have this book if you want anything to do with having the common path to uncommon success. I am so excited to have you here. John, welcome to Setting Yourself Free. Obviously you have, because when I was blessed to meet you at Clay Clark's Thrive Time, you shared with me that you work pretty much like one day a week. And I aspire to be John Lee Dumas the second. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I mean, I love talking about this conversation because that was my dream 10 years ago was to achieve financial freedom, lifestyle freedom, time, space, all the things, freedom. And, and I've been able to do that. And it didn't come overnight. It came over time. It came with a lot of hard work. But I have been living that dream for years and years now down in Puerto Rico, um, just loving life, you know, getting to hang out with cool people like Katie at, at events that I get to speak at and, and, and attend and just be a part of. And life is good. I mean, I'm really looking forward to this conversation and I love your energy, Katie. So let's go. I can't wait. Well, I would just ask um, after obviously spending time with you at uh, Clay Clark's event is that um, what are you the most passionate about in all of your successes? I would honestly say it's really going to a quote from Albert Einstein, which is try not to become a person of success, but rather a person of value. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm passionate about that is because that's what I was doing incorrectly for the first 32 years of my life. Mm -hmm. I was chasing success. I was trying to become a person of success. I went to law school because I thought that was what successful people did. I worked in corporate finance because of the same reason and commercial real estate for the same reason. And that was just the wrong mentality. And it wasn't leading me to success. It was leading me to unhappiness, mm -hmm. um, not, not being successful, and you know, not having control of my life and my time. And when I really understood that quote of being a person of value and saying to myself, how can I just add value to this world, free value to this world? What would that look like? The idea for Entrepreneurs on Fire came to me as a daily podcast, interviewing the world's most successful entrepreneurs and just giving that that content away for free every single day. And 3,900 episodes later, I've been doing a daily podcast for over 10 years and life is good. Yes, I can only imagine. And the value you bring to the people that you have on your podcast is amazing. And it really speaks to what people want, which is the time freedom and the financial freedom. So maybe you could um, share a little bit about how you vet who you even have on your podcast, because it seems like it's pretty broad, but also very specific because it's about being an entrepreneur, of course. Yeah, it's intentionally broad because it is about that. It's about becoming a successful entrepreneur. And there's all shapes, sizes, types of successful entrepreneurs, different businesses, different niches, different industries, different verticals. And that's what's really exciting about business and entrepreneurship and life in general is just we have so many choices, but that also can be scary having so many choices. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really hope my show is able 
to allow people to say, you know what, I'm really interested in this topic. Let me listen and learn more from somebody who's crushing it in this topic. And maybe I'll actually know by the end if this is actually something that is of interest to me, or maybe I'm less interested now. So that can save me a lot of time, energy, effort, and money. And I can move on to something else that might be more interesting for me because that is just not it right now. And I want my show to kind of be that. It's kind of like a a free internship where you can listen to what it actually is like in the trenches without mm -hmm. having to commit yourself to it and then figure out afterwards, is this something that I want to pursue more? So when I'm vetting my guests, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a variety of topics, broad topics where people are the best in that specific niche. So a, a broad array of topics, but each topic I bring in the expert, the authority figure, the influencer on that topic, in that niche. And then I have them share their genius, their area of expertise, their skills, their knowledge on that specific topic so that my listeners, whom I lovingly refer to as Fire Nation, can go to eofire.com and can search using the search bar for a topic that they're passionate about, see all the podcasts that I've done on that topic, and listen, knowing that they're listening to people who are really, truly the best at what they do in that area and gain the knowledge that they want to gain. So that's what I'm really looking for when I'm vetting is, is this person the best or one of the best? in this area of expertise. If so, let's bring them in. Let's have a great conversation about why they're the best or why they are one of the best, what what made them there, the mistakes they made, the lessons they've learned, what they wish they knew. How can we better arm my listeners who may want to follow in their footsteps? That's awesome. That's great. So you have on your um, website, which I would encourage everyone to go to because there's so much information and he gives value and everything. I mean, the giveaways that he has are amazing. So, but you did talk about ditch busy. How about that? Because I think some people think the busier the I am, the more successful I'll be. Ditch busy. I'll tell you, I love this word called productivity. What does productivity mean to me? It means producing the right content. So many people are busy. They're running around in circles. They're busy doing this. They're busy doing that. At the end of the day, you ask them, well, what did you really accomplish that's meaningful? And they kind of come, come up empty. They're like, well, I was just running here and running there and posting this and reading that. And mm -hmm. I'm like, listen, you're going to succeed if you are producing the right content for your business. If you're being productive by producing the right content, then you have a chance of winning. For me, what did that look like? Producing a daily podcast, interviewing entrepreneurs, everything else took a second seat to that. I had to focus on being productive, producing a daily podcast, interviewing entrepreneurs. What does that look like for you in your business? That's the question you need to ask yourself. You need to ditch busy, forget about busy, and be productive to what's meaningful and what matters to you in making your business succeed. And then how does the money flow to you? Because obviously you have on your website, um, your invoice, I wouldn't say invoice, but your income, income report, which is, yeah, which is amazing that you do that. So I, obviously you have multiple streams of income. Maybe you could touch on that and, and your, you know, income report that you have. So that kind of goes back to something I shared earlier on in our conversation, which is try not to become a person of success, but rather a person of value. And that's what I did back in 2012. I said, I'm going to be a person of value. I'm going to create a free daily podcast interviewing the world's most successful entrepreneurs and give it to the world, give it to the world. I'm going to give it to the world for free. And I did that. And I was a person of value because of that, because I was gifting this great content, this great knowledge for free. I was a person of value. And then what happened? The world in return gave back to me ways that I could monetize that by having a big audience with sponsorships and then writing books and doing courses and coaching and masterminds. And I could go on and on with the revenue streams that are out there and they come to you when you satisfy rule number one, yeah. be a person of value. Yeah. Amen. Well, I can tell you this. Um, I enjoyed meeting you, obviously, at Clay Clark, and your heart is so big. That's the one thing that I loved to uh, love about you and loved when I met you, how mm -hmm. humble you are and how um just giving you are. And that's what I was like. If you wanted one last thing for people to know about JLD and entrepreneur 
entrepreneurs on fire and fire nation, what would you want them to know about JLD in your heart? Well, listen, something my mother told me my entire life growing up was be humble, be happy. And I launched my business 10 and a half years ago. And that seems like a long time ago and also like a short time ago. I can remember so clearly, like it was yesterday, having no idea if my business was going to succeed, being terrified, being scared, having doubt, stress, anxiety, the imposter syndrome. It was all there. It feels like in some ways it was yesterday. So I resonate with that. And yes, I've been very successful in my business for very many years now, but I just don't and can't and won't forget what it was like to launch a business when I first started, you know, at 32 years old, having many failures in my recent past from that, you know, launching this new thing that was really scary and I had no idea if it was going to work. So it's easy to remain humble when I, you know, can so easily remember and have memories of what it was like, you know, well before I was successful and not knowing if this was going to work and seeing other people who are in that situation, one that I just feel like I was in super recently, which in a lot of ways I was, and just wanting to help them and be a person of value to them. Just like I'm hoping people that are listening to this voice right now that's coming, you know, at you, or if you're watching this video, you know, this person that's coming at you from Puerto Rico, just maybe giving you that one extra idea, that one extra ounce of confidence that just might kind of break the camel's back in a good way and get you moving in that right direction. Yeah, that's awesome. It's so good. So I just want to encourage people, please go to the Common Path to Uncommon Success book and get it because JLD pours out his heart of how to get there, a roadmap to financial freedom and fulfillment, which is amazing. And I just want to say, as he has said, that Jim Rohn's favorite saying is you become the average of the five people that you hang out with. And I am so grateful that we on Setting Yourself Free got to hang out with John Lee Dumas today. So please follow this on Facebook, follow it on YouTube, follow it on Rumble and and Twitter and Instagram. We will have this everywhere. And I just want to say thank you to John Lee Dumas and Fire Nation and Entrepreneurs on Fire. And I am just so grateful and thankful for all that you do to help all of us to be a better person to leave an impact and make a difference in people's lives and bring value. So God bless you. Thank you. I appreciate you. And I will be in touch. Thanks, Katie. God bless.